Chasing the dream Push it farther Better than you ever seen Head up to the metal, we going far Throw on the gas, just getting started Let's get it started Pave the way, world's uncharted No problem, we ain't solving One, two, three Let's get it Let's get it Let's get it Ain't no rest, we make noise Love it when you see it so good That you can't avoid Pedal to the metal, we going far Go, going far On the gas, just getting started Let's get it started Pave the way, roads uncharted Let's get it Let's get it started Let's get it started They say if you make it here, you can make it anywhere. As I reflect on Prince Harry's visit to New York City, it is essential to recognize the remarkable journey that has led him to this global stage. Once labeled rebellious, troublemaker, and many other labels, despair, and expected to remain in the shadow of his brother, Prince Harry has not only carved out his own identity, but has emerged as a powerful leader and advocate for numerous global causes. The Clinton Global Initiative, Travelist, the Diana Award, the Halo Trust, invited by Queen Masinate Mah Mahato Seiso from the Kingdom of Luceto to speak of his close relationship and what Luceto has made, meant to, um, to him. It has certainly solidified his reputation as a compassionate, morally grounded individual who continues to show resilience in the face of adversity. Despite the relentless persecution from the United Kingdom's press and media figures like, let's not even mention their names for now, Prince Harry's commitment to making the world a better place has never wavered. His speeches during this visit were not just words, they were a call to action, filled with the urgency and depth of someone who knows what it means to be relentlessly attacked, yet chooses to rise above it and fight for what is right. Let's get it. Please welcome Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Good morning, everybody. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, in 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik the world's first satellite. Prince Harry's speech at the Clinton Global Initiative highlighted a growing threat that affects everyone, but especially children. Our digital world. His deep sense of morality was evident as he spoke about the dangers of social media and the mental health crisis that have emerged as a result. Young people today are disproportionately affected by negative experiences online 
and mental health issues stemming from their digital interactions. The statistics prove it, he said. Prince Harry's message was clear. The safety of our children is non-negotiable. He took his, this opportunity to discuss the Parents Network, an initiative launched by the Archwell Foundation, which provides parents with tools and support to help protect their children in the digital world. My lock screen is a picture of my kids. What's yours? These children and thousands more meant the world to their families. The beautiful faces you see before you, their smiles, their dreams, all lost. All too soon and all because of social media. As he passionately spoke about the loss of young lives due to social media harmful influence, Prince Harry's deep sense of humanity and responsibility for future generations was unmistakable. These children meant the world and the world to their families, all lost, all too soon, all because of social media. His personal connection to the issue as a father of two and his commitment to global change were palpable. This speech was a reminder that while he may have been born into a royal family, Harry's leadership is driven by a profound sense of justice and empathy. He is not only fighting for his own children, but for all children worldwide. And fear, orchestrated at the highest levels, needs to be seen for what it is, a tactic to mask indifference and a failure to seek real solutions. As a growing movement, the Parents Network is committed to this journey. We need platforms that mirror our highest values, designed with safety in mind. But in the meantime, we can't wait. Our kids can't wait. We need to create programs that teach digital literacy, emotional intelligence, and critical thinking. We need to equip our youth with the skills they need to identify and combat online threats. We need a better digital future, one that we all deserve. We were promised a human experience. Instead, we've been a human experiment. This is an invitation to each and every one of you to open your eyes, ears, and hearts to these realities and to channel our power, resources, and intelligence toward meaningful action. All we have today in this moment is the defiance of boundaries we once thought existed. We've split the atom. We've walked on the moon. We are more than equipped to tackle this. The future of our world and our youth depend on it. We all just need to want it enough. And I know that I do. Thank you. At the Travelist Summit, Prince Harry continued his advocacy for environmental sustainability and responsible tourism. Travelist, founded by Harry in 2019, aims to revolutionize the travel industry by making it a force for good. During his speech, Harry emphasized the role travel plays in conservation, community well-being, and the global fight against climate change. He said, together, Travelist and its partners represent a combined market value of nearly $3 trillion. $3 trillion. 
dollars. This is a massive force for good, and we're committed to using it to ensure that travel not only sustains communities, but helps, helps them thrive. Prince Harry's passion for conservation stems from his deep-rooted connection to Africa, where he has long supported efforts to protect wildlife and empower local communities. His leadership within Travelist is a testament to his vision for a sustainable future where travel benefits not just tourists, but also the places and people being visited. He made it clear that climate change is not a distant threat, but a current crisis. He stated, as a father of two children, that's absolutely terrifying. Once again, Harry connected his personal life to his global mission, showing his audience that his work is driven by a desire to create a better world for the next generation. Ah, uh, yes. Greetings, my esteemed viewers. I trust you're mildly entertained by today's episode of Majesty Sussex Report. I mean, it's not quite tea with the Queen, not that Queen, the other Queen. Thank you. But one does what one can, doesn't one? Now, before you get too comfortable, might I remind you to bestow a like upon this humble video? Oh, and subscribing, well, it's terribly fashionable, you know. All the royals are doing it, or so I've heard in the servant halls. And as for that notification bell, well, ring it if you must. It ensures you don't miss our thrilling gossip about the Duke and Duchess of somewhere or another. I do love a good scandal. I mean, ahem, thoughtful discussion. So go on, engage with the channel, dear. It keeps the gossip flowing. And frankly, who doesn't love a bit of drama? And with that, I bid you farewell, for now. Carry on and do be sure to come back, won't you? At the Diana Award event, Prince Harry's leadership took on a deeply personal tone. Speaking to the young changemakers in the room, Harry connected their activism to his late mother's legacy of compassion and service. I know that my mother would be incredibly proud of you guys, not just you, but all of the award winners, he said, reflecting on the significance of the award and how it embodies Princess Diana's values. Harry's deep sense of duty to continue his mother's work was evident as he encouraged young people to take the lead in solving the world's most pressing problems. Prince Harry took the time to listen to the voices of the young activists that demonstrating his belief that the solutions to global ch challenges <coughs> excuse me, will come from the next generation. He emphasized the need for mental health awareness, stating, we need to continue these conversations. They are solutions to all of these issues. This reflects his ongoing commitment to mental health advocacy, a cause he has championed for years. Prince Harry's involvement with the Halo Trust is perhaps the most profound connection to his mother's legacy. Princess Diana's iconic walk through an Angola minefield in 1997 brought global attention to the dangers of landmines, and Prince Harry has made it his mission to continue her walk. During his speech in New York, Prince Harry reflected on the importance of clearing landmines and the progress that has been made since his mother's death. Carrying on her legacy is a responsibility that I take incredibly seriously. We know the road ahead is long and challenging, he said. Recognizing the challenges that remain while emphasizing the progress that has been achieved. The Halo Trust work in Angola 
as other conflict zones is critical for both wildlife and human safety. And Harry's leadership has helped bring attention and funding to the cause. His commitment to human dignity and global peace is unwavering as he continues to fight for a landmine free world. Throughout all of his speeches, one theme emerged time and again, perseverance. Despite the media's relentless attacks on him and the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, his wife, despite losing his royal security and having his every move scrutinized, Prince Harry continues to show up for the causes he believes in. His work with the global community and with global organizations demonstrates a deep sense of morality, humanity, and dignity, and a commitment to leaving the world better than he found it. Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, decision to step back from royal duties was not about abandoning responsibility. It was about embracing it. They chose to focus on the issues that matter most to them, and they have done so with grace and an enormous amount of courage, despite the obstacles they have faced. As Harry said at the Clinton Global Initiative, we need a better digital future, one that we deserve. We were promised a human experience. Instead, we have a human experiment. This is the essence of the man, the essence of Prince Harry's leadership, a relentless pursuit of justice, a deep empathy for those who are suffering and a commitment to creating a better world for future generations. His visit to New York City was a powerful reminder that this is a man who is not defined by the titles he was born into, but by the values, the values he embodies. Cheers to Prince Harry. It's weird that I miss you so much. You're still in the room When the moment I'm chasing is already gone You make something new Don't play with me, play with me, play with me Cause you know that'll sweat my nerve Just stay with me, stay with me, stay with me Cause I don't wanna feel the burn You're cool like, cool like, cool like diamonds No eyes, no eyes, no eyes shining in my tank, little rocket fuel I just wanna be cool like you Ooh, Cool like, cool like, cool like diamonds In the news I'm starting to believe that this dude needs an intervention I don't know what you folks think about this But I seriously I think he needs an intervention Something is happening, and we need to intervene, <laughs> or maybe not. Prince William appeared via video link uh, to talk to head of state at the United Nations on Tuesday, September 24th, just hours after his brother, Prince Harry, visited in person. In his virtual address, William urged world leaders to halt the loss of biodiversity and vital natural habitats across the globe. William's speech came as his wife, Kate Middleton, hosted a meeting at Windsor Castle for her annual carol service at Westminster Abbey in December. I am so happy she's working. She can pick up more hours and get out there and the people can see her because she's a working royal. So I am happy to hear that she's... Uh, no? Oh, she's going to... Oh, she's picking and choosing. Oh... Oh, I see, because at any moment, she cannot feel well. 
Okay, well, well, that I understand that, I know, but but I have a question. So, does she have a crystal ball? So she knows she's gonna be well for the Christmas Carol thing. So, she already picked the dates when she knows she's going to be well, right? Okay. No, no, no. That that is completely logical. That makes complete sense to me. I mean, when my mom was, you know going through cancer and we knew I mean my mom knew she knew the days that she was going to be feeling awful and the days when she was going to be so great that we could you know go gallivanting yeah in other words here comes the circus it's a clown in his upcoming memoir on leash jump on leash was he on a leash who, who let him off the leash? I mean, really, can they leash him again? Is that a word even? I should be serious? Okay. In his upcoming memoir, Unleash, Johnson, who was Prime Minister from July 2019 to September 2022, reportedly writes about meeting Harry on the... Huh? Was it his final... Okay. Meeting Harry on the prince's final day as a working royal in January 2020. According to a September 27 preview of the book, which is said to be serialized by... <laughs> it's gonna be serialized by the fail. Didn't he get like a whole bunch of money to do that with the fail? Didn't they pay him a whole bunch of... Uh, you know, you scratch my bum and I'll scratch your... Okay. I don't know, I'll scratch something. All right, so it will be serialized by the fail. Um, Johnson writes that there was a ridiculous business, ridiculous business, when they made me try to persuade Hare to stay. Kind of manly talk. What? They had a manly talk? What the, how the, what's, what's the manly talk? Can you bump your chest together? Boop. No, honestly, what's a manly dog? Do you just like, what do you do? Do you rip your shirt apart and go, let me see who has more chest hair or something? No, that's not a man. No. Okay. Well, I don't know what a manly dog is. Maybe I've never had one. The 20 minute meeting took place behind the scenes of the January 2020 UK Africa Investment Summit in London, according to the Daily Fail. Johnson is said to have praised Harry for his Invictus Games and the Duchess of Sussex for her work in promoting the education of women in developing countries. Didn't, like, Johnson's sister or something, a lover or something, wrote some awful stuff about Megan? Or, or said something about something? I know something was said. I just don't have the... the, the I took that disc out of my memory because I needed to like, I needed space. But the audacity. Now, here's another question I've got. So, you know how like the monarchy shouldn't be intervening with the politically elected set? Why are they calling him and saying, we need you to do this? And what a coward of a father because that's the role of a father right am i wrong here or let me see all of this could have been really easy if the palace like the king and the soon-to-be king like sent out a note made it public that said enough is enough stop harassing Meghan markle the Duchess of Sussex, this is not acceptable. Maybe that would have helped. But but no. Let's do everything else. Everything else. Let's call in the circus before we actually tell them to stop harassing the black biracial woman. Ugh. Gosh. They don't need a consultant. They need some therapy. Therapy. And the great takeover of the crown is still in effect. I guess we are in stage, what, three, four, six, ten? Stage 20? Not sure. 
But if you remember, at the coronation, Camilla Parker Bowles made sure that her grandson was prominently featured. I mean, here you see him. He's like, but Grandmama, I do not know where to stand. Where should I go? Listen, I told you already where to go. There's a box over there. You stand on the box so everyone can see you. You are the future king. Do you understand me? Yes, Grandmama. I understand. I'll go stand and make myself visible to everybody. <laughs> Maybe something is wrong with me. <laughs> But I think there is a plan. Because I'm sorry. What does Tom Parker Bowles do it? So Tom, he's 49. You you are kidding me. This dude is 49. Man. Okay. I I wow. Okay. Tom gave a brief update about his stepfather health in his new interview with British Vogue about his upcoming cookbook. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. So, let me get this straight. They are concerned about Harry spilling the beans or some crap like that, they said. Uh, we cannot we cannot trust him. He's lost the confidence of the king and the... <clears throat> And whoever, and none of us, have any confidence in him. He cannot be trusted at all. So he can't be trusted. But this guy, this guy, he can give updates on the health of the king. That's not even his dad. Folks, the takeover is at stage 30, I think. I think we're more advanced than we think they are. So he can give the update. So he is trustworthy, right? But Harry isn't. And Harry isn't trustworthy because what did he do? Oh, 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 oh. So there was like like a hundred people talking schmack about Harry and his wife. And they kept talking schmack and schmack and schmack and lies and lies and lies. They wrote books. There was this one lady, she's just called Angela Latrine or something, or she's Lavender Lab Laboratory. And I don't know, whatever her freaking name is. She wrote some stupid little thing. And all of a sudden she thinks that she slept with, uh, sorry, that she um, was with Harry for two years or something when she in actuality was just like a week or less than a week. Actually, I think it was just a couple of hours. Okay, I digress. So, this dude can, 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 can give an update on the health of the king. And because Harry responded back to all these, you know, people who were schmacking, stalking schmack about him and his wife over and over and over again. That sounds like a song. Maybe I should write a lyrics to that over and over and over again. Okay, I digress again. But... Here is my thing. He did the docu-series. All he did was said, hey, this is what has happened to us. He didn't say it happened to anyone else. He said, this is what's happened to us, right? And then he wrote this book. His memoir is called Spare. Da, 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 da. All he did was said, this is my life thus far. And I'm gonna lay everything out, including my privates, Right? So that these people who've been talking schmack about me don't have anything to talk about. And Harry is the one who they can't trust. Now, I recall when Harry found out that his dad was diagnosed with cancer. The guy, because he has a good heart, you know, he got in the plane, flew over there, Got in there, bum, 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 bum. knock on the castle door. Papa, Papa, it's me. I'm here. Papa. The castle door is opened up, or the palace, or whatever. It opened up, and pa 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 pa
It's you. Why are you here? But Papa, you've got cancer. Who? Hey, do I? I've got cancer. Camilla, do I have cancer? Oh, I do. Okay, I've got cancer. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Well, Papa, I'm here. To... You only have 20 minutes. I've got a helicopter to catch. I'm going over to Balmoral. What? I'm going over to Balmora. What? Well, but I flew, like I, I came, I went, I got on a plane and I, 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 I paid full price for the plane thing. It was like a lot of money. And, and you know, you got billions, I've got a couple of millions. So like, you know, I flew over, I didn't sleep. And I can, you only have 20, damn. Okay, you good though? All right, what else? All right, okay, man. Nice seeing you. What? I sung American? No, I'm not American. What? Okay, whatever. Whatever, Papa. Okay, bye. Bye. Ciao, man. Take it easy. You better look at me like that, Camilla. So that happened, right? That is like an interpretation, right, of what happened. And when he was interviewed, I'm talking about Harry here, by ABC, ABC. They were the ones who interviewed him, right? Good morning, one of them. And he was like, when when the guy was like, hey, this is Christopher Reeve's son, right? Hey, man, so can you give us an update about your dad? What's happening with the king? Is he good? Is he not? Is he not? What's going on? The prince, who talks too much, said, next question, please. Well, he didn't say that. He kind of said something like, he's good. That's okay. Next question. So he didn't say anything. He hasn't said anything. Countless times they've asked him stuff about that family, and he has said, nada, zeppo, zinch. But he's the traitor. Okay. Wow, English sense makes no sense. English logic is not logical at all. Your Honor, I rest my case. They're crazy. So... Let's get back to what the story really is about. So Tom is going is giving updates about the king. He says, cancer, it really is a bastard, Tom told British Vogue in an interview published September 24th. The king's having the best treatment. He's a great man and a tough man. And you've just got to get on with it, you know? Of course, anyone who has someone they love like i love him you know he's like my papa <laughs> he didn't say that but <laughs> oh i have to stop this i really do okay i can't continue talking about this this is just ridiculous this dude this dude honestly and then you have the middleton one whatever his name is he's writing a book what is he writing a book about dogs who are royals because this was this one is writing a book on on cuisine the other one is writing a book on what? What did the dogs? <laughs> okay, I need to. I need to end this segment. <laughs> And Prince Harry is returning to the UK to be the guest of honor at the annual Well Child Awards in London on Monday, September 30th. Harry is the patron of the charity for um, severely ill children, one of the few remaining causes he has kept on um, since stepping back from full time royal duties. And you can just see it when he's there among those kids that it, it is, it is very close to his heart and something that he really enjoys doing. I'm sure you folks have seen um, the images or um, the video of this one kid and I'm going to get emotional if I tell this story. Um, oh man, where he's speaking to the mom and the kid is there too, and I, I don't know what it is that, that the child has. 
um, the young the young boy, but it, it almost looks like you know he, he has no control of, of, over his 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 um, body, uh, uh, and he kind of reaches out. And he hugs, he hugs Harry, and Harry says to his mom, "Does he usually?" And he, and his mom said, "No, he doesn't. He he doesn't like hugging people." Um. Okay, give me a minute. I am so sorry. <laughs> I should know better than to try and tell a story that I know is going to get me all in my emotions. So sorry about that. Um, I, it's just really great. It's great to see him interact with those kids. It's great to watch how they react to him. There is, and we know this, we've talked about this. There is something about some people that you can't fool a child or you can't fool an animal about, like pets. There is something that they see that once you grow up, once you become an adult, you no longer have the ability to see or to sense or to, or to know. And we know what it is. I don't need to say it. We know what it is. So it's absolutely wonderful um, that he'll be there in person um, to interact with those kids. Well, fresh off the Duke's New York City trip, Center Ballet announced that um, Prince Harry will be visiting Lesotho at South Africa in early October. It will mark his first return to the region since um, his and Meghan's uh, visit in 2019 and will be he will be joined by Centibale's co-founder, patron, Prince so, which is absolutely great. Now, our, our big question is whether Megan is going to be there or not. Listen, they will tell us if it's in the best interest for her to be there. She will be. If it's not, she will not. You know, I think they need to be careful of not overextending themselves and um, being strategic about where they show up together and where to do things um, individually, um, I think it's just a, you know, a great um, plan. I was going to talk a little bit about the whole Duchess difficult nonsense, but then I've just decided not to. I'm not going to give any more air to that nonsense. It's 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 quite fascinating, right? To to see this barrage, and it's so obvious what they're actually doing it's so like i don't understand sometimes why it's so obvious to so many of us and to others it is not but i've come to a bit of a conclusion that it's just because they don't want to see it it's the same thing like you know supporters of that of that person in the u.s running for um, presidency again i i think i think they know all the things that he is they know they just don't care, right? So this whole pretense, it's, they don't care. The thing that I'm gonna speak really briefly here a little bit about um, politics, because I'm planning to do perhaps an episode on this. I'm, I'm deciding whether to do it or not. But I've been watching lately a lot of minorities, especially black men, young black men, who are somehow justifying to themselves why they're voting for him and i honestly am dumbfounded by i, I don't get it i i, I don't want to say no i'm not going to say what i was going to say because the illiteracy on on communication social media media in general and the lack of doing proper research is astonishing to me. Because sometimes I wonder when they say, oh, the, this politician needs to go here, there, everywhere. And I'm like, well, why? I was like, just, just, just do your research, be informed, 
but these people are not informed. You have, and I think I'll show it if, if I end up doing this um, episode. They had this young lady. I mean, if she was my daughter, I wouldn't let her leave home dressed like that anyways, but that's just me. Um, so, so, so as my niece looks at me, she's like, Tio, really? Honestly, I was like, I don't know. Maybe I'm Mormon. <laughs> Maybe. But there is this, 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 and it's so, it's so fascinating for me when I'm looking at this from different angles, right? Because the person defended Kamala Harris is this, this white dude, this, um, and he's in a circle, basically, or they're in a circle, sitting in a circle, he's in the middle, and he is sort of debating people who are against her. And many of them are minority. But so she comes up and her whole thing was that Kamala got where she's she's at because she slept her way there. And it was fascinating to see the way this young lady behaved, the things she was saying, and how she wasn't listening at all. And at the end of it, she sort of walks away and goes, I don't hate women, people. I don't really, I don't hate women. And I kept thinking, but you're kind of ignorant. You, I, I'm, I'm, if you're going to go, at this, at this is the other thing I don't understand, because I see a lot of people getting baited into these conversations or debates where you have these ultra conservative um, uh, right wing fascist whatever, right? That 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 would would like to see the Handmaid's Tale be the future. And you have people who are whether they they they're they're queer or 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 trans, and they'll go up and try and debate these people. And I'm always thinking, I'm going. Do you know that these people have prepared for every single question and every single thing you're going to throw at them? And if you're just going to show up there and say, well, what do you say about this? And you think you're being all brave and all of that, you're not. Because what they're going to do is humiliate you. They're going to make you look stupid. The only way is if you have someone who is actually very knowledgeable about a topic and knows every angle of that topic and has also been trained and know how to respond back. I used to say to my kids when, when, when I was teaching because a bunch of my kids walked out when I was teaching um, creationism and, and, and evolution and all of that, right? I started out with evolution. So most of my kids walked out because I was in a very Catholic um, neighborhood. So they walked through the class. And I, I was okay with it. I was like, just, just go. Uh, but the following day, when they when started the, the class again, I said, listen, I'm not here to tell you what to believe. As a teacher, I'm not here to tell you what to believe. I'm here to teach you. I'm here to tell you, here are the theories that are out there. Now, the best way for you to have ammunition or to win your argument for your belief, whatever you believe in, you need to know what other people believe. You can't just stand there and yell your beliefs and think you're going to win an argument that way. I said, so for the next week, this entire week, we'll be talking about evolution, we'll be talking about creationism, we'll be talking about what the indigenous people thought about how this world came about. I said, what my job is, my job is not to tell you which one to believe in. My job is to bring them to you, tell you what, what, what their beliefs are. Now, maybe it will change your mind on what you believe, maybe it will not. Maybe it, 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 will, it will be able to give you a even stronger validation of your beliefs. But in order for you to have that, you have to stay in the class. You can't just walk out. You're not going to win an argument by walking out or by not knowing what the opposite is thinking. So 
I'm just flabbergasted with this sort of thing, and I don't know why I started to talk about this now, because... Oh, okay. Folks, I'm going to end it. <laughs> um, the plan is, I'm not promising it though, but the plan is um, that I will do an episode tomorrow, a podcast tomorrow, and it's going to be all about comics, okay? All about comics, because I'm so way back on saying hello to so many of you, and... Um, go through some of the comments to all of our new subscribers thank you gracias merci i appreciate each and every one of you to my legacy people you're my people thank you very much for showing up always and um being there for the comments for the for the everything um none of this is possible without you folks showing your support and I thank you very, very, very much from the bottom of my heart. All right. So there is so much more to talk about, but I think, you know, I didn't want to get to an hour. I'm close to an hour. Adios. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. There's so much going on right now, as always. And, and I know the world is just upside down, but... But I have to I have to hold on to some hope. And I hope you do also. Okay? Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. Take care. Ciao. Talk to you soon. That I miss you so much You're still in the room When the moment I'm chasing Is already gone You make something new Don't play with me, play with me, play with me Cause you know that I sweat my nerve Just stay with me, stay with me, stay with me Cause I don't wanna feel the burn You're cool like, cool like, cool like diamonds No eyes, no eyes, no eyes shining In my tank, little rocket fuel I just wanna be cool like you Cool like, cool like, cool like diamonds No eyes, no eyes, no eyes shining Chasing you like the sun and moon Sunday blues And the sky's looking bright But you see in colors Not most people do So you lead the way Yeah, Don't play with me, play with me, play with me Cause you know that I sweat my nerve Just stay with me, stay with me, stay with me Cause I don't wanna feel the burn You're cool like, cool like, cool like diamonds No eyes, no eyes, no eyes shining In my tank, little rocket fuel I just wanna be cool like you Cool like, cool like, cool like diamonds No eyes, no eyes, no eyes shining Chasing you like the sun and moon Thank you.